Hey everyone, before I get started with this video, I really want to say that this is a topic that a lot of conservatives probably will not like a transgender person covering. So be sure to hit that like button because I'm probably going to get a lot of hate similar to that video I made about chest feeding. So thank you so much for doing that ahead of time. How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood medical student, and today we're going to be teaching Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene the difference between gender, sex, and how there are more than two sexes out there. Sex transcends the binary as well. If you don't know who Marjorie Taylor Greene is, she represents the 14th District of Georgia in the U.S. House of Representatives, unfortunately my state, but why am I even surprised at this point? And she's been making quite a lot of headlines recently for not only blocking, uh, or at least trying, attempting to block the Equality Act from going through, which is an act that would protect LGBTQ individuals, but also the kind of the aftermath of what happened after she attempted to block it. This isn't the first time she's actually made the news. She's actually made quite a bunch of controversial statements in the past, which is actually documented in other websites. You can definitely check it out. But for this specific instance, she decided to put up a poster in front of her office door in retaliation of the Equality Act and the representatives trying to support it. And this poster says, there are two genders, male and female. Trust the science. Now in this video, I'm honestly going to give her the benefit of the doubt and assume that the most education she got in biology was at the high school level. And I'm going to attempt to explain to her that sex goes outside the binary and that gender doesn't align with sex. From a psychobiological perspective, there's actually quite a huge difference between sex and gender. Actually, children don't develop a sense of gender identity until they reach the age of three years, much later than when they are born. Now, when I look at the poster that she, you know, put up next to her office, it's very clear to me she is actually talking about sex and not gender when she talks about trusting the science. So right now, um, Ms. Green, I am going to attempt to teach you about um, chromosomal sex. Now, the two most common chromosomal arrangements that you may have learned in your high school biology class is XX and XY. And historically, XX was attributed to females and XY was attributed to males. However, since the decades that chromosomal analysis has been discovered, we have realized that males and females may not necessarily align with XX or XY. And gender plays a huge role into that as well. It's actually not even the Y chromosome that leads to someone developing testes. Within the Y chromosome, there is a specific gene called the SRY gene. And within that gene, there's something called the testes determining factor, which leads to the development of testes within that individual. But science has found that you don't really need the Y chromosome for it and that SRY gene can move around. For some people who are born XX, they can develop testes because their X chromosome eventually ended up acquiring the SRY gene. Vice versa, there are people that are born XY without testes because that SRY gene got deleted in their Y chromosome. There's actually quite a lot of variations on how someone is born with certain chromosomes. Some people are born with only one X that's known as Turner's syndrome. Some people are born with XXY, which is known as Klinefelter's, and they can present either more masculine or more feminine depending on how their genes interact and how their phenotype, which is their outward appearance, looks, and their gender identity may be completely different from the sex they are assigned at birth. There are also people who are born with ambiguous genitalia that do not fit the traditional definitions of a male or female body. People who are born with ambiguous genitalia may grow up to have a different gender identity than the one they were assigned at birth. And some of them continue to have the gender identity of what they were assigned at birth. Sometimes it's not even the chromosomal sex that determines someone's external and internal genitalia and gender identity. One specific example is something known as 5-alpha reductase deficiency. These people are usually born XY chromosomally and are raised as girls because their external genitalia 
align with the traditional definitions of the genitalia for women. But as they reach a certain age, they start developing secondary sex characteristics that align more with masculinization. So they end up having to reconnect with their gender identity later in life and reevaluating how they perceive their own gender identity. Now, as I begin to conclude this little lesson for Marjorie Taylor Greene, I want to emphasize that there is actually quite a lot of overlap between being transgender and also being intersex. A lot of intersex people are assigned a specific gender at birth and continue to align with that gender. However, there's a lot of intersex people that no longer identify with the sex they are assigned at birth and have a reawakening of their gender identity. So for us to be inclusive, for us to be great legislators, we should be aware that everyone is different, everyone's experience is different, and that we should constantly seek to learn more about other bodies, other people, and learning to understand them. Thank you so much for watching, Ms. Green. I hope you liked this video. I hope you found it entertaining, and I hope that you will share it with your other Republican legislators. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my activism and daily life and to see my trans face everywhere you go. And I'll see you in the next video. This has been. All right, yeah. it's recording. It's recording? Yeah. Poo poo pee pee. <laughs>